Welcome to another episode of Random Road Cuts, where we investigate a random road cut, try to figure out what's going on with the geology there, identify the rocks, perhaps interpret some of the geologic history, and just have fun together learning. It's a great uh, opportunity. Thanks for joining me. I'm a geology professor, Sean Wilsey, out here along Utah Highway 7 on a very cold morning, but a really nice morning. We've got the great view of the Red Rock Country, the Pine Valley Mountains in the background there, and there's just so much geology down here to take in. But we're gonna first start with this road cut here, and we may move up to the next one just to the to the east as well. So we'll head across the way here. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you're new to random road cuts, again, we just start at one end of a road cut, methodically work our way across, and learn as much as we can. Uh, never been to this road cut before. I do know a little bit about the geology of this area in southwestern Utah. It's obviously dominated by by sedimentary rocks, but there's other rocks as well. Uh, and so we've got some nice colorful rocks here, but let's dig in closely, work our way across this outcrop and see what we can learn together. So we can see that there's obviously some, some bedding, some layering in the rocks here. They are tilted gently to the left, which would be to the east. Uh, we can see that continues up towards the top there where the unit at the top is a little bit harder more blocky it looks like there's it almost looks like a sawtooth pattern that's probably distinctive fractures that run uh, along one face and then another forming those 90 degree angles there but let's work on the road cut here and start with this i guess a uh, reddish purple unit um when we look at sedimentary rocks, we want to start, of course, with grain size. Um, composition is going to be important as well, but grain size is going to tell us a lot about the environment in which things were deposited. We can see some of the prominent layers here. We use our rock hammer a little bit to get into this thing. Fairly soft, <clears throat> not super resistant. And if we pull out that little chunk there, the grain size is pretty fine. I'd call it fine sand for the most part. Uh, there may be some smaller particles in there as well. It looks like there's these white lines which are quite conspicuous that seem to follow. There is some crude, you can see the bedding here, but then there's also some crude wispy lines running this way. And in fact, you can see them intersect over here. These are what we call cross beds. And it looks like some of these white zones actually follow those cross beds. Uh, a lot of times in these sandy sedimentary units, uh, once groundwater has, once they've turned into rock and groundwater permeates them, you can get sections of the sedimentary unit that gets uh, reduced, right? So this reddish color here is from oxidation of iron, but you can get in places zones of white where that iron has been bleached out and so that's probably what we're seeing there is that color was not primarily in the rock when it was deposited uh, but came about came about later after the rock was deposited um, so we can see a lot of the bedding here colors kind of change a little bit and then we can also see there's a little bit more resistant unit here where it actually makes rock and then just above it, there's a unit that looks quite crumbly. So that's likely to be less of a sandstone and more of a mudstone. Right in here, as you dig this out, it just looks like it's a little bit softer, a little bit harder right here, perhaps. But then we get this softer interval just above. And the grain size in these, yeah, again, maybe fine sand, but maybe approaching a bit more of a mudstone. So we can think about energy levels in a second here and depositional environments, but obviously it takes less energy to move fine particles versus more resistant particles. So again, looking back down this way, the nice bedding. So we're seeing some alternating 
uh, layers in terms of grain size. There's some subtle changes in color here, a little more uh, purples in this unit, a little more orange just above. Let's keep working our way across and seeing, see if we find anything different. Um, some places you can see the discoloration or the bleaching of the oxidation is more, instead of following lines, it's a little more patchy. Um, so that's interesting. I don't know exactly why you might get that. And then in some places you get a full layer of that, <clears throat> of that bleaching of the iron oxidation. Working our way up, we can see a lot more of the distinctive bedding. And without touching each individual unit, I think what we're broadly seeing here is these more resistant units are fine sands, and then these softer units are mainly mud-sized particles, maybe with a little bit of sand, but dominantly a finer grain size. And then looking back up towards the whole unit, we can see uh, it looks like it gets a little bit more back into the sandstones, a little more resistant. But down here we have some of these softer sedimentary units. Very colorful. This is what makes um, this part of southwestern Utah have such fantastic scenery is the coloration of things. You can also start to see some of these units starting to pinch down and lens a little bit. And that's typical of when we have stream environments or what we call fluvial environments. Um, you know, the stream is only so wide. And so you'll see some of these individual depositional packages of sediment uh, pinch down as it changes laterally. So it's very likely what we're seeing there is that this is very likely related to, if not streams, perhaps uh, streams and maybe um, a coastline environment, tidal influences perhaps. There's a nice distinct uh, contact right here and then the unit becomes much more massive, more cohesive, and presumably more dominated by the sandstone. So looking a little bit more closely at that. So here's our sandstone, still pretty fine grained, um, but different unit than this mudstone that sits just underneath it here. Let's see, work our way across. And I am kind of going back and forth between standing close and then backing up just so I can see some of these subtle changes here in the unit. So again, the prominent east dip of the beds. Some coloration changes. And then let's come back close again and look at this in a little bit of detail. It doesn't look like to me that even though we're seeing lots of different packages of rocks, um, the contacts look pretty gradational and constant, meaning I don't think there was big breaks in deposition. I think that the energy level and the environment was changing so that sometimes it was depositing the fine sand, sometimes it was depositing uh, the muds, but I'm not seeing an unconformity or big break, an erosional surface, if you will, between these, these units. Another distinct contact here. The unit below is a little more red and kind of splotched, splotched with the, the white. And then you get more of a classic, this feels a little bit more coarse grain, maybe like a medium grain sandstone here. Uh, there's a nice fracture that you see right here um, with some discoloration, some iron oxidation along that fracture surface there. Um, Probably not, could be a fault, but I'm not seeing any signs of movement. Uh, you also see some of the excavation marks from when they made this road cut. There's a drill boring little cut right here. Uh, and then another one right here. Uh, so you can see actually the, the cylinder that cut through the rock there. Uh, some more pervasive fracturing. As we get over to this end, you can see two two sets of fractures running up and down the face there again with a little bit of different color a little bit more dark brown uh, along those fracture surfaces uh, and then we 
get to the end of the outcrop a lot more of this buff kind of brown sandstone another prominent fracture right here with some staining and then that's that's the end of that road cut but i want to walk up to this next one here because i had to go up further and then turn around and i thought i saw some interesting things in this road cut too so i thought we'd maybe package them together tried to hit this in the morning when it was a little less busy so more of the same i'd say um, in terms of the color rock types down in this lower section so with the rocks dipping to the east this way as we walk to the left or towards the east we're going up section so we're going up this package this stratigraphic package of rock the rock should be getting younger and younger as we go so some really fine beds here very thinly what's what we call laminations when the beds are this thin less than a millimeter this is sometimes called uh, laminations or just laminated Look a little bit further i saw some real interesting things as i whizzed by it whatever speed i was going 65. okay here we're actually starting to see okay let's look right here this is pretty interesting what do you see right there we've got kind of a zigzag right in the rock we have this tan lighter colored more resistant bed sitting on top of these more deep red brick red mudstones down here but this interesting relationship right there um, what do you think that is i think this is a fault i think we have a fault running right through here and these rocks have been pushed up over the top so that we can see that this unit's the younger one up above right and the brick red one is the older unit but because there's a fault running through here it's placing some of the brick red unit over the top of that one there so we have a very low angle nearly horizontal uh, thrust fault and this part of utah was squeezed compressed about 100 million years ago during the severe orogeny so we would expect structures like this to exist in places in fact um, just a few miles or kilometers north of here there is a prominent anticline a fold caused by that same event the severe orogeny looks like we had a small little fault there um, there may be another one right about here but let's go up a little bit further and this was the section of the road cut where i thought i saw some similar features so again just lots of sandstones mudstones kind of stacked on top of each other and then right in here it looks like we might have another structure as well notice there's this prominent bed that has the two white units on either side and as we trace that up it kind of dies but then we see it again up here so that we could have another thrust fault in here that's moved this unit up over the top of itself right so this has been pushed up over the top relative to this side and if you move over just one more block you can see this unit here and then it kind of terminates here and then the rest of it's on top so again this thrust fault's coming in at a low angle taking all the rocks on the right side above the fault and shoving them up over and to the left and you can also see there's there's some orientations in there that are a little bit different in fact we can get up there uh, the beds this might be tricky to see let's see how well this works sorry team Ugh. 
So the bed's here pretty horizontal. Hopefully you can see this. But then right here, and again, I'm on the worst footing. Uh, it looks like they turn vertical. There's some change in orientation here. So I think we do have some structures here. Sorry, that was a really tricky spot to stand in. Um, that have caused the rocks to become deformed. Go up a little bit further. And now we get these kind of reddish orange fine sandstones with the white. Let's see what's going on here. So what's interesting here is, um, I think you can see evidence for more faulting, right? The, some of these white beds just terminate and don't continue up to the right on the outcrop. It's a little bit scattered and disorganized. So I think we've got some more faults. And again, these faults are nearly horizontal. There's looks like there's one prominent one right through the middle of the screen there where some of these white beds have been shifted and offset and it's a little too high up there for me to scramble up but again more evidence of these the compression that caused these rocks to get uh, buckled uh, broken in some case there's some subtle folding let's, let's try backing up a little bit too and see if we can see a little bit more of the whole enchilada here Yeah, so I think we can see a few of these faults now. A lot of these cracks that run across the outcrop that are more or less horizontal look to me like they're actually um, these faults. So pretty nice, pretty uh, nice exposure there of that. And then just another look here back over towards the Pine Valley Mountains as the, the sun's coming up. So. Hopefully you enjoyed this one though. Just another fun little road cut where we just investigate things, uh, make some observations together as a team, uh, try to figure out what's what, and then come up with some possible hypotheses, some ideas about how these things came to be. Uh, I think this little zone in here is quite faulted and maybe now I'll give, I'll try one more time to show what I think's going on here. These beds come up and actually are bent and folded uh, almost into the letter S. So a little bit of an S fold here. And those are common with thrust vaults. As you compress the rocks, you might get some folding like that. So maybe you bought this, maybe your interpretation is a little bit different. That's okay, that's what we're here for. So thanks again for joining me. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. A lot of folks enjoy these random road cut videos. They're very off the cuff, impromptu. It's not scripted um, and just us learning together as best we can. So until next time, we'll see you at the next road cut. We'll go ahead and sign off from Southwestern Utah and Highway 9.